Okay, thank you. I feel like that's <laughs> you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm usually the target of a lot of games. Thing, but you don't have to separate yourself. Good separate. evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, May 15, 2017, at 7 p.m. I got stuff everywhere. Mr. Collier, go for attendance. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Whitey. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Here. All members present. Thank you, sir. We'll have tonight's invocation by Councilman Aaron Light. <laughs> right. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity for us to come together, Lord. We ask that tonight you bless the uh, people of New Carlisle, and uh, we ask for your protection to those who serve this city, Lord, and uh, bless every member up here and help. Uh, Everything we do glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank you
your last name again? Ryan. been here locally? Since 1978. Okay. And how are you guys funded? Do you guys do just fundraisers throughout the year and things of that nature? <laughs> they don't. Still the command. Uh, 
our, um, this is our, hopefully we'll get it for the third year. We just applied for that, but it's been a grant funded the last two years through um, a connection to the state I think you guys would be a good fit for the National Night Out and Crime Night to set up a booth there. That I think that would be a good fit for you guys. Um, also, if you guys were interested in putting a booth up during the Heritage Flight Festival, it would be probably beneficial to you as well. So, if that's something you're interested in, I'm sure the festival would donate the space to you guys. So. Awesome. So. say if that's what council wants to do I would prefer to wait to a future one I mean if it's okay with them because that way you can get one that's that's a little bit more yes. professional looking if you if it's okay with you um, since school is going to be out in two weeks we would we would really like it done um, to make it possible okay mr. mr. Lindsay if, if we can make a motion to do this I would be on board with that and then Possibly at a later date, next council meeting, bring her back and give her the, an official one for whatever she would 
going to do with it. Pardon me. I mean, we'd have to suspend the rules of council Mr. first, Mayor. I believe. Correct. Mr. Reynolds. I move we suspend the rules of council. Second. Second. <laughs> Go to the kid. All right, Mr. Rick Lauer. Yes. Mr. Leffler. Yes. Mr. Craybar. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Light. Yes. Motion to suspend passes seven to zero. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Let's make a motion that we acknowledge and accept her resolution or proclamation. I'm sorry. Second. Uh, and uh, then at a later date, have an official one from the city presented to her, possibly at the next council meeting. Okay, so how does... I, don't, I don't think we need it. I don't know if we really need a motion. If council's in agreement, we can just... I just think if he just reads okay. it and then Mike yeah. signs it. Yeah. Yeah. For a proclamation. Do we want to do a reading tonight or at the reading when yeah. we have the more official one? Tonight. Yeah. I, think, I think we should read it tonight. tonight. We just, just have okay. Is that, that way the kids are here? Okay. I think it should be done tonight. Okay. Can, right. I, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, they mentioned bicycles. We used to, uh, Howard, we used to keep the um, old bikes. You know, then the police or the deputies turn in like old bikes and, and they, you kept them someplace. I just sent an email to the superintendent just prior to the meeting because of this and I'll oh, have okay. to answer prior to tomorrow. Okay. Uh, to follow up on the bicycles that uh, John was talking about, the last time I was in the uh, Madison Street School, I believe there's probably a dozen of them sitting in there that uh, I don't know if they're stolen <laughs> or they're not stolen. Do you have some information for us, Chief? <laughs> Most of the bikes that are in the old Madison School is what the, um, has been left along the roadsides or whatever and our deputies pick up and that type of thing. And some of them are basically kids that put, put bikes in there, junk bikes, just to, to try to do something with it right around inside school. We would very much appreciate if those go away. So, so would it be a, what, what would you have to do to, I think there's like a dozen in there, if I remember my count correctly, uh, to, to give these to, the, uh, to FYI for their uh, initiative? Plan? Don't know. Can we just say we can do that, or do we have to make a motion as council to do that? Pardon me? City no, it isn't city property. The school is. But the bikes aren't. They're on your property. They don't make the city at all. They've been in there a long time, haven't they? I'll tell you what, let's. Are let's, they recovered let's, bicycles? We, we will take care of it. We can yeah, get rid yeah, of the bikes. Care. We'll definitely get rid of them. Yeah. We might have to hold over a legal amount of time if we are ready to get rid of them. Correct. They can have them. Okay. Yeah. So we've got to make sure we're covered legally and yeah. be done with it. Absolutely. I've got, I've got I think it's a great use for them. Okay. All right, thank you. All right. So we will do this now, council's own agreement? Yes. All right, and who's gonna come up? Let's say, if you uh, all wanna try and come up and fit up here, or one or two, or how, however bring you them all. like bring to do it. Bring the bear. 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 After this, we need to go to the front of the You're all right. Just saying. It's all trip. Well, I'll tell you what. You stay there. 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 You See what Dale says. Is this okay here, Dale? You want me to call the now? Yeah. Where do you want us? Safety was stressed. <laughs> All right. Where's children? Where children are they? You want me to call the medic now? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Where children are you going to have dreams and ask for Right here. 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 Right here.
We're chosen by the remnant of dreams and aspirations of the future, and as such, deserve to grow and develop in their environments free from fear and victimization. And whereas children abuse and the children abused and neglect can be to be reduced by making making sure each family has the support it needs in raising their children in a safe, nurturing environment. Whereas our society has responsibilities to protect our children and help them thrive in a safe environment, as as every child is entitled to is entitled to be loved, cared for, feel secure, and free from verbal, sexual, emotional, and physical abuse and neglect. And whereas the city of Newport Isle has dedicated individuals and organizations such as the Council Local Schools Family Youth Family and Youth Initiatives, the development of family youth initiative, excuse me, the development of family and protective services, and the child welfare board who work daily to to counter the problem of child maltreatment and help help her, help parents obtain the assistance they need, and whereas effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnerships among families, social service agencies, schools, religions, and civic organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business and the business community. Now therefore I, Mike Lowry, by virtue of the power of authority vested in me as Mayor of New Colorado, Ohio, do hereby declare Tuesday, May 25th, as make a difference in the life of the child day in the city of New Colorado. And you urge all citizens to join, dedicating their energies to cherish our children and helping those often forgotten within the foster care system. Their success is our success. meeting to get the official one from the city? Yes. Okay. Do they need to come back to the council or how do you, or do you want to do it? <laughs> Man, can take it to them. John, John can take it or someone can come, however you guys want to do it. Would you like John to bring it to you or a couple of you can come and pick it up? Okay. Oh, 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 thank you. Oh, that's sweet. All right. <laughs> thank you, ladies. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lighting. Uh, before we get Charlene and Hannah, I just want to say thank you for trying to get you to come so involved in this as well. You know, what that does is it's going to spread awareness. So long after you're out of Tecumseh, hopefully other people are going to pick up what you're doing. Okay. And it's just going to keep spreading the message. So keep up the good work, and thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lighty. And also, again, make sure you guys check up with, with Mr. Craybacher or someone at the city building for uh, national crime out against National Night Out Against Crime. Thank you. Gotcha. So. All right, moving on. Okay. So we have a Poppy Day proclamation to the American Legion Auxiliary Unit uh, 286 to Sharon Pletcher. Sharon, uh, do you have anything to say before we do this? Did you want to? No? Okay. Well, if you would come up here, please. Come on over here. Oh. 
From office of the mayor, proclamation, whereas America is the land of freedom preserved and protected willingly and freely by the citizen, soldiers, and whereas millions who have answered the call to arms have died in the field of battle, and whereas a nation must, resent, must, re, must remember the price of war and the debt owed to these who have died in war, and whereas the red poppy has been designed as a symbol of sacrifice of lives in all wars, and whereas the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 286 of New Carlisle has pledged to remember American, to, to remind, to remind America annually of this debt through the distribution of the memorial flower. Now therefore I, Mike Lowry, Mayor of New Carlisle, Ohio, do hereby, pro hereby proclaim Saturday, May 20th, 2017, as Poppy Day in New Carlisle, and ask that all citizens pay tribute to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the name of freedom by wearing a Memorial Day poppy on Memorial Day, Monday, May 29th, 2017. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Can I have a word with Mrs. Fletcher, please? You may. I know her personally. Hey, Sheriff, I would like to ask you if you would present one of those poppies. To the gentleman right here, he is a world war vet. His name is Louis Brosart. And I'll take care of it when I see you next time, okay? to the city manager's report, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. We're just going to head and start off with our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Colleen Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, council, and members of the public. Um, I have to say that was such a refreshing night tonight to have all this positive and just keep this flow going here. I'm going to talk about our April finance report. And starting out, I'm going to get to the right page. There we go. Total revenue for the month of April was $350,790.71. And total expenditures for the month of April was $285,357.70. Our year to date collected for our revenue is $1,758,076.13. And the total year-to-date expenditures is $1,229,715.81. The general funds income tax for the month of April was $78,462.73. The half percent police income tax collected $37,474.62 for the month of April. Which brings the total for the year to date in the general fund of our income tax collection of $205,105.82. And our year to date half percent police income tax has brought in $100,672.15. The rest of the report is, if there's any questions I can thank. Council, any questions for Ms. Harris? Does it appear so, Ms. Oh, oh. You have one? Yeah. Mr. Craybock. The yes. tax collections, how how did the new company do, I guess? I hate to say it that way, but. Um, pros and cons, there was a lot of pros. I'm going to get a report from our tax administrator for next month once she's gotten the whole uh, reports back from them and what they've collected through mm -hmm. April. So it'll be in my next month's report. I'll get a better feel of what she feels since she was the one that was working with most of the residents. Okay. Right. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Thank you. It. And moving on to city manager report, our service discussion with our service director, Mr. Howard Kiko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Um, you have your report in front of you for this council meeting, and I'll start off with uh, some things that have been going on in the public works department. Uh, we have prepared a cemetery for Mother's Day, and um, the cemetery looked um, outstanding. We are now getting ready for Memorial Day. 
So if you see any, if you have any questions, concerns uh, with the cemetery, let me know. We do have scouts on tap to go out and place flags. I think it's May 24th and 25th. So uh, we should be all ready for Memorial Day. We are ongoing with our dura patching and we have completed asphalt repairs of, I think, all our water main break holes now, um, except for a couple that I found out were veteran on church and uh, Madison. That is veteran, so they will go ahead and get those uh, repaired. They're already marked. Um, the repair for damaged asphalt on Orth Drive Circle was scheduled for today, or the 13th. We ended up get, running out of gravel, needing some additional, so that is scheduled for this Wednesday to get that uh, circle area where the trash trucks uh, keep tearing it up. We're gonna completely rebuild that with about six inches of asphalt in that area, so. Uh, that's that, various street projects currently out for bid um, is our various roads. That bid opening is scheduled for May 18th. Uh, the Clark County engineer will get with me once they get those open and get those uh, tallied up. And those include spinning, Willowick, Applewood, Cloverleaf, and Pepperwood. And again, that's for an estim uh, engineer's estimate of $206,000, and that is being um, paid for by the street levy funds. And then also part of that project is the Water Dog area at State Route 235, and that is estimated at about $21,000, and that is going to be paid for by the State Highway Fund. Moving on to Prentice Drive, Phase 3 and 4 reconstruction. I had a meeting this past week to follow up on um, checking on our design phase of uh, the plans. We think we'll probably get that out for bid here in the next two to three weeks and we'll update with the current uh, construction estimates at a later date. That is being paid for with some street levy funds. That's not in your packet, but uh, street levy funds, uh, CDBG block funds, and then CDBG critical infrastructure uh, grant funds. Uh, onward is the Scarf Road Water Tower. There is an ordinance up for approval to perform a tank inspection. Uh, discussion will be later on this evening in the meeting. And that is um, all I have in my report. Council, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Kitko, is the, I noticed on Henry Street there's some cones sitting there in front of a basin that was repaired. Was that uh, block topped in? Uh, I haven't been down it today, but yeah, yesterday, I think it was, there was four cones blocking off this hole. I have to look at my notes, but I think uh, the public works superintendent had messaged me just a little bit before the meeting. I think that was one of them. Because mm -hmm. I think the only hole we have left is the Ord Circle. Okay. Thank you, sir. Because I know that resident's concerned about all that being messed up. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Craybacher. <coughs> Howard, uh, we got a letter and, you know, an email. And I know TCC came back and said they can't do anything about um, Mr. White's, you know, people cut through his drive there. Um, wasn't there plans at one time where that was going to be taken care of on, on New Carlisle Addison Road? No. Plans to take care of? To, to take care of that, that intersection because it's, so, it's it's dangerous, you know, when you come on a car. No, there, there was a study completed, and uh, they found that um, with the camera they had set up, they didn't find any data that would warrant a um, reconstruction. Yeah, full reconstruction. Okay. It's similar to one of the studies we did when we wanted the crosswalks downtown, and we had TC do the study on that. We get, I think, a pre study every year, don't we? From them. Well, I know somebody, one of the engineers, asked me if we would like to have a roundabout there. And I said, no way. <laughs> so right. if that was the solution, no. People still drive right through the middle. Yeah, drive right through the middle. Good. That's it. Mm -hmm. Sir, Mr. Lowry. Follow up on what he said. I recall that, that they said it was not worthy of reconstruction. However, did they not mention putting cement abutments? through there so that no one could cross all three at one time? I am unaware of that. I did not. I know it was talked about. I don't know if they were the ones that brought it up or if it was brought up by someone here, but could we look into that? I can check into it, but yeah, that doesn't, like that doesn't ring a bell. Like the parking lot, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Like so they can't cross the speed bump. Right. The county um, plows half of that and we get the other half. We would probably not put anything out in that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Thank you. Council, any other questions, comments? Mr. Kicker, I just wanted to thank you for the report. I really yeah, like this. I, just, I really appreciate this because a lot of times you would give out the numbers and, and we'd have to search back through the minutes. <laughs> so this is awesome. Now I just go back to the paper. So thank you. You're welcome.
just keep in mind some of his numbers, a project cost may change. So if you have to refer back for something like a couple months ago, the price may be different. Correct. Just moving forward. Awesome. Thank you, sir. No problem. Everybody done with Mr. Kitko? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And moving on with the city manager report, our fire discussion with our fire chief, Chief Trustee. Mayor, council, and the public. For the month of April, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 71 EMS calls in the city, three EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to three fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had two EMS calls answered mutual aid by Pike and Arthur Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid calls to Pike Township and one to Bethel Clark. Medic 52A responded, was able to respond to one call through the month. Uh, Assistant Chief Geiselman taught two CPR classes for a total of 10 people. Um, this is something that's not in the report. The Department of Natural Resources bought all new March radios, and which left them with an abundance of March radios that are still workable, still usable, um, and put them out to, get to the different law enforcement and fire agencies in the area. And we were able to secure four mobile radios and eight handheld mobile uh, red March radios for free. Wow. Uh, thing we'll, well, the only thing we will have to do is have them programmed to that type of thing. But with that, just with that free setup of radios compared to what we already have, we can now effectively go to the mark system once we have everything in line. Good, good deal. Awesome. Mr. Lindsay. Chief, can you give us an estimate how much money that just saved the city? Oh my God. Wait, here, on the average, a handheld runs in between four and five thousand. Per handheld, we got eight of those. Uh, mobile radios run anywhere from twelve to fifteen thousand, depending what they're what they're programmed, and we got we got four of those. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Craybacher, I want to publicly thank Bill Lindsay, um, your crew. I don't know how many firemen that was at my house that, that one day. There was an awful lot, and also the deputies. You know, I know there's always a couple deputies in town. So I have a whole portion basket of that people. What did you do? You had, I the, can't say. You had the entire county. Uh, I won't say because it was just a dumb thing. But <laughs> however, <laughs> Actually, it wasn't Mr. Craybock. Yeah, it was not me. No. It was somebody he knows. Yeah, it was somebody I <laughs> know very dearly. You buy the pack. But I want to thank everybody. Everybody responded. I want to know the story. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I want to thank you guys for Good responding, question. you know, it helped out, you know, a whole lot. I just uh, had what's in the order, more than what it was. Yeah, I'm lucky it was more than what it was, you're right. Thank you, Mr. Craybacher. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, I had a quick question, Chief, just real fast. Uh, do you know when you guys going to do your next uh, training at Madison School again? Not for sure right now. We, uh, we're just now starting to get into the former months. We are looking at uh, getting two cars brought to the Madison School, which will be towed there and towed back out after we're done with our training uh, to do auto extrication training for, the, for this year. Oh, fantastic. Because I really thoroughly enjoyed last year's one. So I'm Anytime we're down there, there, anyone is more than welcome to come down and watch. And you know, if you decide you want to participate, we can look at that. But, I'll go climb the ladder, but I won't climb back down. How about that? <laughs> I got through the window. I couldn't get back out. I got scared. Are you going to get in shape before this one? Oh, shape. I do the Savage Race. No problem. <laughs> Four hours later, of course. Any other questions for Chief Trust? Second list. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Chief. We appreciate it. Thank you, Chief Trustee. And moving on with the city manager's report, our police, police discussion with Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Council, citizens, and let's start off with a report here. New crawl deputies were dispatched to 50 calls, um, and I want to speak about that at the end of it. Domestic violence, we had nine, overdoses eight, drug complaints seven, and thefts 17. Non-injury crash is six, injury crash one, and traffic stops we had 42. Clark County deputies, and New Crawl deputies are working hard to decrease the drug and theft crimes in our city, but we need your help. Please, if you witness a crime or just see something suspicious, report it to the Clark County Sheriff's Communications Center right away. 
can always use 911. You can always use 911 if you witness a crime taking place for any emergency. If you don't need that, the non-emergency number is 937-328-2560, or you can give the information to one of the new Corral deputies. The new computer system has been installed, installed at the substation, giving us two workstations uh, for deputies to use. The IS department has also updated computer software on both computers, and all of this was done at no cost to New Carlisle. Clark County EMA, we also jumped aboard on this, was able to get radios for police cars and portable radios from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources uh, through a transfer of equipment. Um, the only task for us are getting the radios programmed, and there is a $10 a month fee, uh, and we just talked about the cost of the radios, how very expensive those are. As a reminder, school will be out this month, and you will see more children out, so please drive safely. Uh, deputies are going to be watching. Deputies will be paying close attention to cars that are speeding, not stopping at stop signs, and going through traffic lights. And just, uh, I want us to let us all be safe and have a great summer. The list below is a schedule of traffic fines, and I'm just going to read those real fast. Speed, 20 and over is, 20 and over is $180. 21 over the limit is $205, and that can go up. A seat belt fine for the for the driver is $85 and the passenger is $75. Um, and then there's first and second offenses. Reckless operations, 205. Squealing and peeling, 205. Unreasonable noise, 195. Window tent 195, and if you have proof you've taken care of it, it's 100. All other traffic violations are $125. Folks, they're not cheap, so please be careful with your driving. We're going to be enforcing laws this summer uh, as, as far as traffic is concerned. Uh, we want everyone to maintain safety, and that's including you. Now, what I wanted to speak about is we were dispatched to 50 calls. And that's true, our deputies were dispatched to 50 calls. But here's 37 pages of reports that our deputy generated other activity uh, themselves up here. Uh, it's a new call sheet I was able to get a hold of. And uh, so they just didn't do 50 things. There's 37 pages of what they actually done. Everything that they do on, on the air is marked and then I have access to that. So overall, I think we're doing a great job. It does appear our drug problems risen a little bit. And I don't know why we had so many crashes last month. Uh, six is kind of abnormal. We didn't have that many in the, in the wintertime in one month. Uh, so with that, drive safely. And I'll entertain any questions. <coughs> Mr. Reynolds. Just had a quick question about the uh, schedule for traffic violations amount. Mm -hmm. How often do we cite under the uh, our city code instead of revised code? And do you know how much money we get back from the county when we cite? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Uh, but that amount, I, I can find out through um, municipal court. All right. And how many times? Uh, it depends on what the driving by. I went with the ride along last year. So it's not every year. time. Yeah, because I went right with, along with last year, and we had. Uh, I think it was Deputy Boswell got someone for squealing and peeling, which is the first I've ever heard of. But yeah. I'm fine for that, which I thought was interesting. But uh, so I just didn't know like how much of the money came back to us and how often do our deputy cite with our codes that we're getting more money back instead of the money going, no offense to you guys in the county, I'd rather stay here in the city. So. And we have stamps for our, our citations at say Clark County. I believe they're in red. So we stamp the citations uh, just so they don't slip through the cracks, and we do re retain some money from them. Okay. Um, Mr. Oh, sorry, Ms. Harris, did you say something about this? Just yeah, we have it in our financials, what we actually took in last year, and uh, Mr. Bridge has the uh, uh, budget handy. And we're estimating 5000 on this year um, to collect in court fines. I'd have to look at what we received right next to that number. Would you like me to find that real quick for you? In 2014, we received $20,000. 2015, we received 
2016, we had 5,200, and this year we're projected at 5,000. Of course, when we project, we go kind of low, so anything comes up high is always a bonus. But last year, you had 20,000, was it? No, uh, 14 actual. Oh, okay. 14 actual is 20,000. Okay. We'll have to develop over here. Good, Mr. Roberts? Yes, that's all I had. Thank you, sir. Mr. Craybo, uh, in our last meeting, Aaron, uh, I think it's okay to, to say this, that uh, we were talking about the trolls back there in Brubaker Park, mm -hmm. and Aaron and I had a discussion with it. You, you can take it from here if you want to. Uh, traffic has been down a lot, and, uh, you know, I think the thing we need to just remember to enforce is that Brubaker Park does have a curfew on it, and maybe it would be a good idea to put a sign out there with the dust till dawn. Um, just so, in case anybody just want to wander down there, they see the sign, and we can force the fine. Does it say park open, Clinton dust to those, or one existed there already? <coughs> uh, there is a broken sign. <coughs> there is a broken sign. Okay. But uh, I mean, we can still put a sign up that just says, there is not a sign there that labels when it's open and closed. <coughs> Yeah, we, we've been going on the last conversation, last council meeting was brought up. Um, and then just to reiterate, we cannot close the bike path. Correct. So as everyone's on the same page with that, yeah, that fine. was used with federal funds of it closing someone's sidewalk. So we got the email from Scott from TCC advising us that we were unable to close that because of how it was built and funds used to do that. Um, and then in the meantime, we have been looking at park signage for the park side. So I'm glad to hear it has come down a little bit. That's awesome. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been good. Uh, but we'll still keep an eye out because the uh, bike path goes straight into Smith Park. Sure. So if you're on the bike path, you're going to end up in Smith Park. So we got. We'll have this. we'll have our bicycle patrol out too. That's perfect. Well, as long as they're on the bike path in Smith Park. Mm -hmm. So don't leave the bike Understood. path. Understood. <laughs> as soon as you take a step off. Stay that <laughs> area. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Go. Yeah. If we could. Uh, get a sign up just to let them know um, the hours of the park. I think it would be super beneficial. It's really on both ends of Brubaker Park, mm -hmm. not just the entrance you know, from our dead and street on the other side sure. as well. Cool. Mr. Lindsay. Also on the signs for the park, uh, could the other parks get more than just like one sign in them? Uh, the superintendent from Public Works and myself are already looking at a couple signs for each park. We're going to make them park rules signs, okay. so it covers pick up your dog poop, keep your dog on a leash, dust the trash, all that stuff. <laughs> it's all going to be, and we'll make sure we cover the entrances of each park. So Willowick be two signs, uh, Carlisle Park be two signs at their entrances. So yes, we're going to increase the um, signage at those. Thank you, sir. Council, any other questions or comments? <clears throat> Sergeant Underwood. Yeah. Yeah. And Mr. Yes, sir. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on to the city management report. Uh, under action, action report is Bell Manor. We do have some inspections that I'd like to talk about. Uh, the city has uh, had numerous inspections performed at Bell Manor to include design and architecture, roofing, HVAC, asbestos, and occupancy requirements. We do have another inspection coming up this Wednesday um, at a, I think, a noon. And as with safeguard, to see if there's any kind of pest uh, or insect inf infestation. Uh, the other bullet point under, underneath there says a report uh, summarizing uh, these inspections will be made available to council and city residents very soon. Uh, there is lots of data to summarize. However, I, from what I have at this point in time, I stayed up Friday like midnight and summarize it all. So council now has that summarization. It's about 14 pages long. Have fun with that. Um, yes. um, no, I'm sorry. I, do you mind if I step in for a second? Oh, no. No, not at all. Okay. Um, first off, this was amazing. Um, <laughs> I want to, uh, first, I, I want to thank you, and uh, I believe you probably had help with a little bit of everybody on that side of the table, Colleen, Howie, uh, probably the chief. I don't know who all went through that building with you. Uh, and... Yeah, you, you guys did the, you hit the research button on that building and wore the button out. I think you guys really went through it with a fine tooth comb and did what you know, we would expect and the citizens would expect. And, and I also want to thank the citizens that you came and also uh, gave some, some of the people had some professional opinions and advice that, that dealt with this building as far as their jobs and what they do for a living. Um, you know, when, when, this, when this building came up, 
three, what was it, three years ago now? I mean, it, it's, you know, when you hear that someone's going to give you a new city building, or, or whatever it may be in your own personal life, they're going to give you a new car, you're instantly going to get excited. Whether you're not sure if it's good or not, the instant reaction, I think, is probably to get excited. I think a lot of us wanted a new city building. We, I think we need a new city building. Do we need one that big? I don't think so. Um, you know, but these guys are so strapped for space in that building. You know, we need out of this. The, we need to stop having council meetings in a room like this that echoes. But more importantly, they need more room to do their job efficiently. But, you know, when it comes down to this report, you know, we've talked about it numerous times in past meetings that the building was in good shape. And it was hard to get in there, I think, for Mr. Bridge and, and the people who were doing the inspections while they were in there uh, still being used as an operational nursing home. After getting this report, you're, you know, you're looking at potential cost of different sections of the roof to be repaired at $40,000 in a couple of years, and then another section at almost a quarter of a million dollars to be repaired on the roof. So unfortunately, it, it wasn't what some of us was hoping. I think I personally didn't like the way it was laid out. I can't speak for how the other ones felt about the layout of the building, but um, you know, I just can't stress enough that a, a good job you did, Mr. Bridge, on researching this with a fine tooth comb and getting the numbers so that we could make a, a good decision. We, we as council asked him to get these inspections so we could make a good decision for our city and the citizens within it. And I would love to, uh, to make the motion to not accept this building. Second. Okay. Second. Do not? Not. Okay. Surprises. It's a good night. I heard Mr. Lindsay on the second, correct? Yes. I like to bring up the amendment. Wait, did we already suspend the rules? Wait, what's that? Yeah. Did we already suspend We already suspended the rules. Yeah. yeah. You you could, could, even if you had to suspend the rules, you can make a motion. Okay. Because okay. you've had prior legislation. Right. Okay. With the understanding that you had it. Right. Okay. So this is We already did. We already did. Okay. I just got to know how to note it on mine. So when I go back, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what happened. So I have a motion by Mayor Lowry, and a second by Mr. Lindsay. That's where we're at. And once again, Rand, mm -hmm. Randy, thing. Uh, Randy, seriously, bottom of my heart, I appreciate all the work you put in this. I know you were working until two, three in the morning on weekends when you weren't getting. You're probably not on. Well, I know your salary, but you know what I'm saying. You, your work getting paid to be at home. And, and do the work you did on this report, so I very much appreciate it. I think with something like this, it is council has a monumental task on their hand, and you're looking at the city taking a building that some of the people in town wanted and some people did not. Um, this particular project, when it first came to life, as Mr. Mary said, was awesome, but since we signed the MOU and allowed us to get in there and do our inspections, you kind of figure things out at that point in time. So um, I honestly think you guys are probably making the best recommendation you probably can. I think for the first couple of years it'd be fine, but year five, year 10, year 20, year 15, year 25, what kind of position are we going to put our next in line in? Um, so again, I think you guys are making the wisest decision that you can with this particular building. Pass off to you, I know it's a tough decision. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, again, just to echo Mike's comments, and thank you so much for this. I mean, I, just like with Mike, you know, anything that's given to you, you always have to question, and you know, nothing in life is free. Uh, so I, I'm really pleased with it, and I was obviously concerned with the cost and what it would ultimately cost us. And I mean, the roof repairs and things of that nature just really had made me nervous, but thank you again. And uh, mm -hmm. my next question would be is because we're possibly denying this, if we do, is there any way to cancel this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this, pest control. Yeah, this pest control would save some money. Oh, uh, we haven't been charged for anything. Okay. I, I, everything's I, been yeah. Great. Okay, so I was making sure because I saw the pest control. So, or so I was like, let's. It's like if we're gonna get charged, see if we can before we get there. No, yeah. This place has twenty-four hour policies. All right. So that's all I have. Council, any questions, Mr. Lindsay? The, uh, I, I too want to uh, commend you and your staff on getting the, these reports together. I know we had some. Citizens that was here a month or so ago absolutely did not want us to do this. 
we could not make an intelligent decision until we had these reports to see what we was looking at. And when I read the report this afternoon, I knew I was not voting to accept uh, Bell Manor, that it would be uh, a money pit, it would be worse than Madison Street School ever thought about being, and I think it'd be a good place for a parking lot, but we don't have to say on that. But, but I just again wanted to thank you uh, and your staff for the for the uh, information you was able to provide to us and all your hard work that you've done on it. I appreciate the kind words. Council, well, Mr. 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 Go ahead, John. Um, this is my report. I don't know about your report, but you know my printer was getting kind of hot dealing with it all. So um, the, I guess the citizens can, if they want reports, they can get them from the city building, I assume. Yeah, yeah, or, I mean, yeah, that's if, right. If they want it. If they want it right here, absolutely. Okay, and you know, I was for this building for, you know, ever since the beginning because it's like a car I sell on the pay now and pay here or whatever mm -hmm. lot and it looks really good, nice and shiny and you have all this good stuff, but you take it on home and the transmission blows out. You know, I got a, you know, from Goodwill, I got a car from that, you know, similar to that. So, and I'm glad that, you, that we did our due diligence. You know, it looks like the one citizen I got up, you know, about a month or two ago, she said, have you done your due diligence? Well, we haven't had time to do, do <laughs> it wasn't time yet. And we did not have the information we needed to, to fight anything. So I'm glad the information came. You know, uh, I hate to say I'm glad you stayed up to 1 o'clock in the morning, so. <laughs> oh, you're fine. You do. He's up to 2 o'clock anyway, so. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You should look at the times when I send you emails sometimes. That's oh, why I. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> that is if we do. That, that's right. You know, we got the information, you know, and I think we're making a wise decision for down the road. And, you know, um, we did our due diligence, and that's what I'm happy with. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Craybacher. Mr. Lowry. Thank you. I as well want to thank you, <clears throat> excuse me, for all that you've done researching this. Second, not last, but second, um, and thank the people that came forward and spoke against it. You know, we get accused all the time of not listening. We did listen. We did it the way it was supposed to be done. Okay? And it's all over Facebook that we not listen and do all this and that. Okay? Last. <clears throat> Kind of hard to say this since we have Madison Street property sitting there. However, we have tried to give it away, do everything else to get rid of it or alleviate the city of it. Somehow, some way, we will have to keep a good eye on this property because, in my opinion, it will never be sold. I don't know who would buy it. Okay, we're going to have to make sure that it's kept in a proper. And I agree with you. It is um, office apartment. And I think it's zoned entirely off the department because that particular lot is all parcel half different. There's not one big parcel for the whole property. It's not like seven or eight different ones. But I do think it all falls, falls under that office apartment, which actually for this particular building is a good thing. You know, we don't want that zoned as a residential unit. We don't right. want that zoned um, as industrial. Right. If someone were to come in there, I can see it being a similar facility that's not going to offer competition to Van Crest or quite frankly, it's going to be apartments. I mean, mm -hmm. if I was an apartment investor, I would jump over that building because there's rooms right. there. Okay. I, I would. I mean, okay. it's, it's the yeah. stuff that we have, we, we have our issues, but an investor might have a lot of resources they can get some stuff okay. fixed. Okay. Um, and may not have, we have responsibility to tax pay. Right. You know, a private investor is more likely than that. So okay. um, I'm sure it will sit in for a little bit. We'll have to be very cautious and be cognizant okay. to be on top of it. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Council, any other questions, comments? One more question, Mr. Ridge. Mr. Ridge, when will the letter be sent to Van Crest that we declined their generous offer? If we did. Um, if we, if we you have guys have voted now, I mean, uh, I'll probably wait towards the end of the week. Um, I don't know what you're going to get some comments about people who wanted it. So, I'm not going to jump the gun. The vote's been set, uh, but I will probably contact them either Thursday or Friday. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Just to give you a lot of time to have feedback from people who may want to talk to you about it. 
council wants to revisit this for whatever reason, hopefully have some time. Thanks, sir. Mr. Lowry. Just to kind of piggyback off what uh, Mr. Lowry said, it does make me nervous to have another empty large building in New Pearl Isle. So, I mean, whatever we got to do to keep an eye on it, just so we can uh, have somebody in there as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty high on the priority list right now. Sure. Um, the hardest part for me is knowing that sooner or later we're still going to need another city building because rents are probably going to go up. And, uh, you know, just trying to decide in my mind. You know, do we take this risk or do we, you know, sooner or later, no, we're still going to have to cough up a large amount of money. But the report that you guys came up with made it so very easy. And, you know, going forward down the road, you know, there's going to be nobody that says, you know, we make the wrong choice and we should have taken this building because of the report. So, again, thank you so much for your hard work for getting it done. And I appreciate it. Moving forward, I think council knows we are going to have to have a serious community discussion on where the city building is going to call. We can't continue on renting. I am working with the current owners of the building um, to give us a very aggressive sell price. But if we stay there, we're going to have to expand in where we're at. And any time that we expand in our current hole, that does require voter approval. Um, we are in discussion with some other places in town. Um, and at the same time, too, to present a fair and all the options possible, we need to look at cost of renting, cost of renovating, or cost to build new. If we're going to spend five, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars on the building that we rent it, or if we have to go in and do any kind of renovations, I think we need to look at seriously how much it costs for us to build exactly what we want and move forward from there. You know, um, there's a benefit to building new opposed to taking on an old building. All old buildings are going to have issues. Um, so if we build new, we would defray those kind of upfront long-term costs. But that is a discussion that we will have to address kind of in the future with the home of the future home of the city buildings. Mr. Bird, one question, because I know we've got to vote. This is going to steer off a little bit. But it is still their responsibility to maintain that building. Not ours. No, not ours. Uh, it's their responsibility. It's their responsibility. I mean, if there's a busted window and there's animals and kids, it's still their responsibility. The liability is not on us. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right. Can you call for the vote, Mr. Collier, it looks like? Can I ask one more question? Yes. Is council okay with me waiting until Thursday or Friday to contact them? Why wait? I, I agree. I don't think council's going to change your mind we, once we take we this vote tonight. Vote. I, as far as I'm concerned, you can send that letter tomorrow. I don't know how the rest of council feels, but I, I think tomorrow will be an excellent time to drop it in the mailbox. I think we owe it to them. So no matter what citizens come, nobody's going to change. No matter what. No. Not, not after three no. And we have evidence now if somebody does say something. We have evidence and proof why we did what we did. And if they can understand it or we can explain it to them, they will say, well, some people don't know how to read, you know, you know, reports and stuff when it comes to buildings, you know. Uh, well, like, like the boiler, I mean, those could last another 20 years. They could last or they could blow up. They can blow up tomorrow. But you see when they do go, what it's going to take to replace them, you know, the individual AC units. I mean, there's so many little things that just to change, to change, to change, to change, to change, add up. And we haven't got to the fire suppression system yet. We have no clue what the state's at today. So there's a lot of unknowns still, even though we have solid numbers with other things. So it's just going to get more worse, the bump price set. For, for what we would spend on this, uh, based on this report, in the next 10 years, that would be a heck of a down payment on a new property or a new building. Sure. Because you're talking probably a mill and a half. I mean, I didn't add all the numbers up, but. I mean, like I said, I mean, it's not saying this stuff is going to go bad in a given time frame. We just know how old some of the boroughs are. We know a little understanding about that roof. That roof in the next 20, 25 years, the whole thing going to be redone. Um, so, again, these things could break next week or they could last 10 years. But this tells you that when it does go, this comes And, and these are the days prices, too, by the way. But you notice on the roof, I put at five percent inflation. If you, the longer you put it out. All right. When you're ready, Mr. Collier. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Bethman. Yes. Mr. Craybuck. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Brown. 
Absolutely, yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. The motion passes 7 to 0 to not accept the donation. Is that first by Mr. Mayor and second by Mr. Reynolds? Yes. That was second, second by, by, Mr. by Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Lindsay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mr. City Manager, Mr. Bridge, you, I apologize. Are we cutting the community meeting now? Yes. Yes. Council? Yes. 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 No, no reason. reason. No reason. No reason. No reason to have it. So we need to So we take an opportunity to discuss the water tower? Well, unless you want to win. Well, uh, I, I think we need to ask Mr. Lyra what his opinion is. Mr. Griffin. Well, do, do you still want to have that meeting on the 25th? No, I don't no. see no reason for it. No. Okay. All right. All right, Mr. Bridge, you can, can I apologize for. Uh, Stepping on your toes in the middle of your No, yeah, no, I'm lost. Report. No, I'm mad. <laughs> okay. Give me one second. I do apologize. You were at the end. You were getting oh, there. Good, <laughs> the that is a good thing for everyone. <laughs> All right. Under informational <laughs> items. Um, ATVs. Sorry, this is the third time it's on there. I promise I'll get it done here soon. Uh, I believe Mr. Googler is the one who actually uh, in question or uh, was wanting some information on that. ATVs, ordinances that govern needs to still have not got a chance to research them, and that goes along with Madison uh, School 0.5% income tax increase. So um, I will put that on my uh, to do list. It's been on there, but other things have kind of been can push that down. No disrespect to Ms. Googler, but I think you were the one who requested that information. I am still working on it, okay? And then moving on, City of New Carlisle, we have some board openings. The application is attached to this council packet. So parks and recreation, we have three openings. We did have two people respond back who wanted to remain on that board. So again, if you want to be on the parks and rec board, the application is right here. I think it's also on our city Facebook page. We also have one opening in the tax board of review. We have three openings in the human rights board, and we have two openings in the civil service commission. So if you want to be, you have to be a resident of the city of New Carlisle, and you do have to be 18 years of age or older, so you have an interest and volunteer on any one of those boards that does that you have an opening, Give me a call and I can explain what each board does. Um, once you fill out that application, council approves your application. Once they approve it, then you're officially a member. It is that simple. Um, I think we just had Ms. Christine Walker just recently get appointed to the Board of Zoning Appeals. She had her first meeting not too long ago and it went very well. So um, if you want a chance to volunteer, this is the way to do it. And moving on, we have some sad news. Our current income tax slash Finance clerk, Ms. Amy Garman, has accepted another position. She will be leaving the city of New Carlisle. Uh, since Amy has uh, found a new place of employment and we are now income tax outsourcing, we have decided to abolish that income tax finance clerk position and bring back uh, our former position of finance clerk. Um, so our current central cashier, Victoria Portner, will take the uh, upgrade to the promotion up to finance clerk. And then we, uh, there will be an ad in Wednesday's paper, Dale's paper, uh, for hiring us a new central cashier. So we will be doing, um, I think, first round of inter uh, reviews is May 24th. So if anyone has any interest in coming to work for the city of New Carlisle as our central cashier, just let them know that information can be found on our city's webpage as of Wednesday, not yet, or they can stop in at the city building and get a job description and application packet. This is a great job to have. Um, the benefits are fantastic, and you would work directly under Ms. Harris, who is a great, great leader. Um, <laughs> she is. She's a fantastic leader. And um, yeah, please come join the family. And that's all I have for the city manager's report. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments for the city manager before we move on? <clears throat> all right, thank you, Mr. Bridge. Appreciate it as always. Moving on to comments from members of the public. If you have any comments or questions, uh, please go to the podium, give us your name and address so uh, clerk of council can put that in the minutes and try to keep it to five minutes if you would please, anyone. Did you get his name, Jim? No, I didn't. Did you say it one more time, your name? Roy Kegley, K-E-G-L-E-Y. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, we got word over the weekend about a proposed um, turn lane initiative, um, and I just wanted to say that with the initial um, plan that I reviewed, uh, I think it is a terrible thing for the downtown district in New Carolina. 
I think it will cripple the businesses downtown, especially my business. Um, it will take away every parking space we have. We have no place for loading, unloading, uh, or anything else. And I talked to Randy earlier. Uh, he said that uh, there may be some other options. I look forward to seeing that. And uh, basically, uh, we are having open house this Friday. It's our grand opening uh, at our new location. And I think we have a couple of members of the council coming. And we'd like to invite everyone else coming as well. And also, Randy's coming. Here. So it'll be uh, 437 on Friday. Congratulations, too, by the way. Thank you. Thanks, sir. And also, if with your concern with this, I don't know if you've gotten this packet. There's a couple of them by the door. There's some pages in there that you could, or if you would like, put them in here. And, Get them into the city, or you could email Randy or Mr. Kitco, or you can call Mr. Kitco directly and and voice your concerns that way. Correct? Is that? Yeah, really try to use myself or Tricia to put them in, so we can keep them as a record, or public record. Once you bring them in, and we don't lose track of any voicemails, emails, or anything like that. So any of your comments, um, if you can write them down, shoot me an email, uh, anything like that. So that way, I keep track of your comment. I'm sure you'll be at the public meeting too. Yes, so, yeah. Yes, we'll yeah. Um, one more thing in addition to, um, I mean, I understand we have a traffic flow, a traffic flow problem going southbound, basically. Um, I mean, I noticed that basically from, say, 4.30 to 5 o'clock, maybe 5.30, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure if we need to go such drastic measures for half hours or an hour a day. I mean, I would like any of you to come stand in my store all day if you want. You the intersection, we have a front row view. I mean, it's just not fair. We have a traffic congestion problem for less than one hour a day. Right. Right. Thank you, sir. Council, Mr. Yeah. Whiting. Uh, Mr. Kigley, I kind of I agree. Um, I used to have a <clears throat> meat shop in town, and I used to stand at the corner and just watch the cars go by, thinking that, uh, well, I mean, so many people go by, surely they're going to stop in. And uh, you're right, it's for a short period of time. And you know, I had the same initial reaction when I saw you know, 30 parking spaces. That, that scares me, and I don't even have a business in town anymore. Now, did I also read someplace that, that there, there is other options where you don't have to take away 30 parking spaces? Is that? Mm -hmm. I think. Well, this is the current about. proposed, okay. so just put your comments down, your public stuff, we go to the public meeting. And this is not nothing set in stone. This isn't a federal railroad of a project, <laughs> okay. nothing at all. So for all concerns, and I'll certainly write up mine too. Because I, I feel you, and I you know it's important to me that you guys succeed as well. So I, you know, as a business owner, I just don't see people parking in the public parking and in walking the around the block to get downtown. I mean, it's hard enough to get the citizens from New Carlisle or wherever to stop downtown the way it is, and this will just cripple and paralyze our businesses. <laughs> well, thank you for coming. Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Bridge, just real quick. Uh, so this open meeting this is from ODOT. Will this council have any ability to approve or disapprove what ODOT will do? Because I know with like Enan, Sand, and Gravel, they won't. So no, you, you've already signed, signed, signed that. Signed that. And, and we can repeal that. Can we repeal that ordinance? I think you're probably past the 15 days you have to repeal it. Well, if you're in the okay, initiative me, repeal, but. All right. Well, I, I, no, I have one more follow up. Oh, sure. For initial repeal, for referendum, is. How many days? I don't know why you would, would appeal it though, because when well, this. Well, if it's going to take away 30 parking spaces. Okay. I mean, that's not the, that's like the ult, If that's the worst case scenario, we got to look at what we could do as a council to stop this. If that's the. The project will go worst through case. with no turnouts. When I first took over city manager, I wanted modern signals. All right, so I talked to Scott at TCC. He said, great, we can get it. The study came back, and it's based off the type of funds it is, traffic congestion, mitigation, and what else? Air quality. Air quality. And they said, hey, you can add some turn lanes. So I said, great. And there's initially 15 parking spaces, 15, one, five. Mm -hmm. Then they go in and do the engineers. And they said, all right, the stop signs have to come back, so that's going to push everything else back. I agree with you. 30 parking spots, ridiculous. I'm right there with you. This is 100% funded, not a dime out of our pockets. Why would you resend that order? Just, hey, come to the meeting and say, we don't want the turn lanes, but we, we want the new pretty post. Oh, I'm just saying that. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is if, if 
they Absolutely. will negotiate all. Because like a great example is what's happening in Enon right now. You have the mining issue mm -hmm. where the city has absolutely no authority in that, or the village has no authority in that issue. And so they're writing the governor, the attorney mm -hmm. general, and everyone's like, hey, we don't want this. No, and yet yeah. ODNR is saying, well, you're going to get it. And then they said, well, maybe not. So like if there's absolute worst case scenario, or they're going to take 30 spaces, well, yeah, we might lose 100% grant, but how many businesses will be gone in the same? So I'm looking at worst case scenario here. Not right. right. No, we have a say. Absolutely, that's the whole point of a public comment section. So well, I'm just making sure because like ODNR had the public comment section where over 100 citizens from Eden set, showed up and said, no, we don't care, we're still going to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I want to absolutely avoid from happening. And I think that particular had a different set of yeah. background yeah. with it. Um, but this is strictly uh, proposed at this point in time. We can go in and say, we don't want term limits. Simple as that. I talked to Roy today on the phone and I agree with you. I think the problem is just heading north. I think it's a little bit longer than what people think because I've been out there and I see it at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Since one person turns left, it backs up. It may not be backed up for a while, but it takes one car. I don't think there's any issues on 571, the east-west route whatsoever. You know, um, But again, this is an opportunity for the city to get modern traffic signals. We can forego the turn lanes and still get the banisters, and it's still 100% funded. Um, so everybody's valids are extremely, I mean, everybody's concerns are extremely valid, but again, put on the brakes, wait till the 14th, come, give your opinion. We as a community, we say we like this part of it, we like this part, but we don't like this part. And then we send it back to ODOT, and they redo the thing, and then it comes back to us. Yeah, just to follow up, we, I'm not allowed to make or bring to council any of this information without an official public meeting following the federal guidelines. I wanted to hand deliver the documents to the businesses and basically got a slap on the hand said you must mail to property owners, you must do this, you must do this, you need this wording on the bottom of the document. Um, so I couldn't discuss the various options without having a public meeting. So there could potentially be three or four more if we bring more and more proposals or if it just goes a single we won't have another one. But yeah, this was, it's a, following Fed's guidelines is a little different with this project than just simply us sitting here going, what do we want? Let's do it and call it done, so. Come here. I got one real quick, hold on. But regardless, they still have a lot of studies to still conduct, correct? Pretty much the studies are done. We go to public comment. At this public comment, basically, if it comes to 100 to 1 or 100 to 0 or fit, whatever it is, they say, we don't want this. I go, all right, uh, engineer, what's some, some other options we have to just do light uh, changing because they're dock, they'll be Doppler connected for flow, so and and we'll just work through some other options. And in the end, it would it, there could be just signals and nothing else done. Payment striping. So, Mr. Lindsay here. The the lights you guys are talking about. I think we need the new lighting uh, stop lights. The I believe they have the same systems in system in Tip City and. You used to go through Tip City, and if you was doing 24 mile an hour, you got hit at every light. If you did 26 mile an hour, you got hit at every light. But now, if there's no cars sitting here, those lights never change, and they talk to one another. I agree with the rest of the council that spoke. I think the lights are great to turn lanes. If there's any way you can say no now, in my opinion, we should say no now. I don't think you should do that. I think you should wait till the public comment period and. You might have 100 or 200 citizens come and say, yes, I hate that intersection. And they might outvoice the business owners. I mean, that's what this whole point is about. Mm -hmm. It's about people showing up and saying, we like this, we don't like this. But, but I'm looking at the thing that also, if, if that does happen, mm -hmm. then we're not going to have a business district because they're all going to close up because they have no parking. Mm -hmm. well, that's not good. I've already heard that from a couple of them that if this happens, they will just shut down and leave. And we have enough empty buildings, I think, in town that we can't fill with tenants. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. <clears throat> yeah, I have something I need to say. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> that I need to say, and this is, I want everybody to understand, this is not a pat on the back. I'm not trying to give any malarkey out here. I am very interested in this. I don't want the parking system to go away. I uh, don't want the parking lots to go away. But it is very possible that I can't be at that meeting. 
I'm going to speak for you. It's very possible he may not be at that oh, point. There yeah. is something very big going on in my family's life right around that time. I'm not going to give you the dates because I'm not going to tell people when my house is empty and when it isn't empty. That I won't pass up the word. So if I'm not at that meeting, I don't want anybody going on Facebook and saying Rick Lyra wasn't there. Yeah, and he didn't care. It's my 50th wedding anniversary. So, and uh, that's what that's all about. So, if we're not there, it's not that we don't care. And I, and I want to get that out there. Because I know stuff gets turned around constantly. Okay? I'm real, really want to see this go the right way. And I have my opinion, but I may not be there. No, I understand. It's a, it's a, like I said, when I first approached the project, it, I just wanted modern turn centers. Right. Then it come back to turn lanes, and I'm like, you know, so I mean, that's just how it goes. When they get into these projects, they, this is, this is just how it goes, you know, so, yeah. but we have an opportunity here, again, to come together as a community and voice our opinions on a mature platform, the way that it's supposed to be done, in person opposed to giving fictitious information over Facebook. Mm -hmm. Come to the meeting in June, tell us your opinion. We'll probably end up changing. I personally do not want 30 parking spaces to go away from downtown. I, don't think I do think that we, we have talked about this many times. So we, kind of do. we both agree it's going to be detrimental <coughs> to our downtown. But again, that's how the project's proposed. <coughs> our citizens come, they give their input. We amend the project. That's simple. All right, let's move on. Congratulations, Rick, on 50 years. Thank you. Yeah. Congratulate Herbert. Congratulate Herbert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I didn't know you were allowed to get married when you were 12. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> I love you, brother. <laughs> Thank you for the comments, sir. Anyone else have any questions or comments tonight before we move on? Sure. <laughs> Mr. Hall. Name, number, Social Security. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And real slow on the Social Security. Yeah, so real slow. The number on the best uh, credit card. Yeah. Don Hall, 205 North Scott Street. Uh, just very quickly, the last time we had a, a public meeting, um, I, I don't like to criticize, but most of the public comments didn't come until after all my kids were in bed. Uh, I, from what I've gathered through the evil spectrum of Facebook, as this is a, a, a very hot topic. I talked to a lot of people downtown about this over the weekend. Very emotional topic. Um, and with that being said, if, you know, with the impact that could happen one way or the other, uh, and I'm sure there's viable opinions for this currently, too, um, I just would like to see if we could organize it in a manner where we can get max participation where you know, I'm not having to leave in the middle of the meeting because my kids have to go to bed and my wife's eight months pregnant. Can we possibly just, you know, try to organize it in a, in a fashion where we can get max participation? Okay. Uh, yeah, it's already in the flyer and what will be in the news article, I think, if that piece will be in there. It's uh, organized by ODOT in a manner. It's from 6 to 8. The first part is we describe what the project is. The second part is the public comment or public question and answer. Um, it says in there three minutes, that's not a rule, but if there's a lot and you say um, you don't want 30 parking spots, next person says no more. Okay, who says the same thing? We don't want to hear 50 of no 30 parking spots. We want to hear the most diverse uh, comments. And then what we'll do is after that, then it goes one on one. So then it's a one on one forum. And then if it's eight o'clock is running a little late, or if there's a group of, uh, we've been talking about this today with business owners that want to meet with Tricia and myself or with the, with the city staff and go one-on-one -on -one after, even after that, then we'll do that. But yeah, it's, it's organized to try and keep it to those three phases and not, ha not hear the same thing over 50 right. times. So is, is ODOT going to be providing mediation or who, who will be calling it's, it's, uh, strikes, I guess? For basically, the Tricia Bishop and myself Okay. Or, or the head people, and then we'll have the engineer talk about the project. Scott Boyer will also be from ODOT. He's our project manager over the CMAC funds. So, yeah, we'll be um, keeping it yeah. orderly. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Anyone else before we move on? All right, thank you very much. And, I'm sorry, Mr. Lowry. Yeah. I'll have to ask questions. No. Oh, Moving on. <laughs> to anybody, whoever. Thank you. To anybody, whoever wants to answer. Uh, you're going down the street. 
and as someone already said, the city parking lot is always empty. Why is it? Say it Does again. Anybody know? Why is the city parking lot always empty? Because why is it not utilized? It's not good either. Yeah. Are you talking about the one behind the building? Like good weather? Good weather? It gets used like during the big events. Well, you can't cut around. Most people are not going to walk from Church Street over to the to get to the shops. I mean, when I opened my, open my store, I talked to Randy prior to it. And his major concern he told me when I opened, or before I opened, was I'm going to have, he's afraid I'm going to have parking issues. And fortunately, I haven't at this point because people are parking on 235 beside my store. And they're also parking in front of South Interior's house in time to the store. But the way that this is proposed, the turbine is even going from south and northbound on 235. They're going to wipe out those spots, which is going to take out my loading, my unloading. People are not going to park over back in Egypt, I'll call it. There's no direct access without walking around the block. Okay. I mean, elderly people, handicapped people, people with strollers, they're not going to do it. They don't. Okay. Right. I'm with you on the parking spots. I don't want to see them go away. My question, I used to, I mean, this was a parking lot. I've used it many, many times. It's still there. And I don't see a problem with it unless it's icy out. The main thing I hear from people with the public parking, is, other than it being so far away, is that when you get a couple cars in there, cars to notice the tail, they can't get through. There's not enough room. It's too okay. congested. It's too small. Okay. And honestly, the way I've seen people park in there, I would want to park my vehicle in there. It doesn't make it more and everything else is going to get more up. Thank you. All right. Go to the, could you go to the podium, please, Trish? Speak up a little bit, Trish. Ah. Just speak up. Sure. We can hear you. Oh. I'm a downtown business person, so I had uh, residency in the downtown because of that. I live in Pike Township. Are you very good? Well, I'm hungry here a little bit. Well, I would like to propose something that I haven't heard anybody say that would cut out a lot of big of the big trucks that are flying through. And it isn't just one hour a day. We need just like Tip City and Yellow Springs to have a mid Block crossing. People cannot cross those streets, even if they didn't have the lane. They're just everybody's just going crazy. I walk people across the street block, and how cheap would that be comparatively? Not cheap. And I say that because a couple of years ago we had TCC do a study for that and they went out there, they did a pedestrian count, they did everything else, the planning director time. They, they didn't warrant it. There's not enough foot traffic down there to warrant putting a bump. Maybe down. if they're not afraid of huh? Maybe if they're not afraid to cross the street more. Well I think they look at it because if you just walk down to the corner there, there's a signalized crosswalk there, so I'd probably they'd probably take that into account. But one of the things they propose is to eliminate parking spots. That that would require taking up parking spots right. too. And what they wanted to do is, I think there are a few options. The one I remember the most is like a bump out, kind of like so the sidewalk kind of curved out a little bit. Um, but that we we would have to pay to do all that stuff, and it's not cheap. Um, I just I don't think we don't we don't need a mid course. We just don't warrant it. I, I mean, if council wants to look into that, they can. Um, but we've had a professional study done on it before. 
Um, I think a lot of that comes from the farmer's market being in, being now downtown. Um, so question is, how do you explain city funds for a farmer's market? And I get you, I, I'm not trying to sound insensitive. I just analyze things from dollars and cents and return on investments. You got a farmer's market. How do you put a crosswalk in for farmer's market that's three months out of the year? So I think a lot of that discussion about that mid-course walk, again, has always come from because the farmer's market's been down. But we had TCC dinner. They sat there with the pedestrian counter. And it is not warranted to have a crosswalk there. At all. Mr. Lauer. Well, be a lot more effective than the ones on each end of that lot where pedestrians are really a danger crossing. I'd sure. like to offer that. Thank you. Did you have? I do. Oh, yes. I'm going to pick your brain for a minute, John, because I think he was here then. This is back when Bob Bender was still city manager. We did, and I don't know who the group was, we did a city walkthrough on a Saturday morning. It just dawned on me. One of the things they said that could be done to help the parking situation downtown was Washington to church. It's a pretty wide street. You may remember this, Alan. You talking about the angle? The angle in part. There's, could you get seven, eight cars there maybe? Um, I'm not already, sure how many, but. We've already looked into yeah. it and it's almost uh, equal because of the handicapped spot and the radius not being painted properly. You couldn't put any, park any cars there, angled in? You can, but it's, it's not, it doesn't gain you spots. It doesn't what? It does it not gain you spots from the current spots. I don't understand why that wouldn't gain it. It's the, it's the width of the street. You have to use a certain angle. It's not a, like a 45 word, almost more of a 60-degree uh, angle, okay. which then in turn makes those lines not 22 feet for a normal parallel parking spot. They can be 24 or 26 foot long. So it actually doesn't, in, it doesn't increase your amount of parking stalls. It's okay. actually may reduce by one. Okay, thank well, you. We have looked at this because we're going to okay. be doing, redoing the municipal parking lot this spring. Okay. We're getting there. I'm going to rework it a little bit. I brought up Mr. Chico, look at putting parking spots there in Washington. Because um, we knew with that initial comeback of the design that there would be some parking spots left. Okay. Even if we put a crosswalk, you're still going to lose parking spots. I don't want to say, and don't quote me on this number, you're going to lose three on each side or two on each side. So you're still mm -hmm. going to lose parking spots, you know, with, the, with, with the crosswalk. You, you gain control of the how would, I, how would I control? And another thing too, it's not going to be signalized. This the crosswalk was never going to be signalized. This is on the state route, so we're going to get ODOT involved, you know. But since there's another signal right there, that crosswalk was never going to have a light. On it. it was just basically a bump out with two flashing lights that walk, flash you, kind of like the bike path. Crosswalk. Yeah. It was never signalized. That's definitely would never get approved by ODOT because there's always there's a light literally. How many feet is that? A couple hundred maybe? 100, 200. 100, 200 feet there at 571 and 235. Mm -hmm. You know? That's not the only um, place that it is dangerous. It's very dangerous. At the end of the block, same thing. Cars are turning like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that was part of the study as well. And again, it was not signalized. It was just a cautious people pedestrian mm -hmm. crossing. It was like in Yellow Springs. Yeah, Yellow that's Springs. exactly what we have in Yellow Springs. Yeah. But Yellow Springs doesn't have, they don't have. Well, they the, have a lot of traffic. Well, they may have traffic, but they don't have semi traffic. That's like true. They, that's true. They have a truck route that goes around their downtown. Yeah. You know, true. our concern is with the big semi trucks. Sure. So um, we've been over backwards to try to get that crosswalk approved. Um, sometimes, if something's not warranted and you go ahead and put it in, you still you'll, you can get liability from that. And people say, <coughs> what was the issue with the over here on Linden, the sharp curve? Remember, somebody stop said one of the stop sign the stop or slow sign. down sign, it really wasn't warranted, you know, so everything that we do, we, we have to make sure it's a needed purpose, you know, so uh, we, again, we looked at the crosswalk in downtown, we've been over backwards and nothing just came out. You know, our former city manager had looked at the report, uh, since it wasn't signalized and cost a lot of money, it's no different than if you just walk across the street. If it was signalized, I totally get you, totally worth it, but nobody's going to push a button across the street. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if 
just would be stating you do need to go slow here mm -hmm. and stop if somebody's walking. All right, thank you, Trish. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming tonight. Okay. Anyone else in the audience? All right, moving on to community reports. None tonight. No resolutions tonight. We'll drop down to ordinances. One with action, two for introduction. Mr. Collier. Ordinance 17-17, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to Evaluation services. Council. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for ordinance 1717. Does Mr. Whitey second? Yeah, I heard that. I did the same. Hold on. We're at 1717. Motion again? Yes. Motion by Mr. Kerbocker, second by Mr. Whitey. Mr. Lighty gave a second. Yes, yes, sir. All right. So next nation to this ordinance, um, this piggybacks off the water tower. Uh, council wanted us to look at different options to get that project started. So basically, <coughs> this is an ordinance to allow us to send this out for a take inspection in order for us to put it out for bid at a later date. We have to know the condition of the tank before we put it out for bid. And that's simply what this ordinance does. It just gives us the authorization to hire a company to come in and do the inspection. Anything else you want to add, Mr. Kirko? Mr. Reynolds. Okay. Mr. Reynolds. So the people who are doing the inspection is also people who we might be going with in the, in the future? We may use them to spec it out and do the bid documents, but they won't be the company who does the construction work. Okay. Just making sure. It's a legal. Yeah. <coughs> Antitrust, you know. I thought we already knew what was wrong with the water. Well, we do. But for order for us to put this out for a bid, we have to have it inspected first. We have to know the condition of the tank before we put it out for a public bid. The other guys was going to do their own in-house inspection. It didn't have to go out for bid under a certain ORC, but council wanted us to look at different options, so this is where we're at at this point. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you need any further clarification on that before you vote? No, I'm good. I should, okay, I, just I, making sure. I understand what you're saying. You want us to spend eighteen thousand dollars? No, not eighteen thousand dollars. You added up all those numbers up, didn't you? I did. I'm looking for it. Was getting the forty-five or five hundred, five thousand, or not five hundred thousand? Which is I added up all the numbers. Fifty-five. We're not doing the dive-in or the ROV. You do the dive-in? Okay. So they're only doing part of it. They're going to the drain it, you gave us. analyze it, clean it, disinfect it. Okay. Give us a report. So off the top of your head, do you know the figure we're looking at then? Mm, 42.85 for that and the report. I want to say 895 for the drain and maybe around 300 for the disinfection. It's about six grand. It's about 6,500, I think. Yeah, it was the top three numbers in your packet when you got it last two weeks ago. Yeah, it was the top three numbers. Just eliminate the divers okay. going in and eliminate right. the uh, remote control vehicle. Okay. Hey, that was pretty close. <clears throat> yeah. mm -hmm. Mr. Craybocker. But, you know, if we have the, if we have the diver that doesn't do the remote control, we, do, we can have one or the other to do the inspection. No, nobody's diving in. Nobody be empty. In. No, no, be empty. If they dive in and not drain, it's like seven thousand dollars. Okay, okay, so that's that's where we're going with. Yes. Because I talked about diving earlier, and that I, I think this is where we had this communication. Gotcha. So, uh, okay, my next question is: I don't know if you found, you know, with the water being drained out, Howard might know. You know, with the water being drained out, would that affect the water pressure, and for how long? Uh, no, what we will do is we will turn pumps on and we will put what they call pressure regulators out on hydrants and it will maintain pressure in the system and if water pressure gets too high it spews out the uh, blow-offs on the hydrant. We're going to pump the pressure rather than the tank uh, okay. giving us the pressure. I understood that. The other part. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Craybock. For council, any questions? When you're ready, Mr. Collier. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. Mr. Leslie. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mayor Allen? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighting? Yes. 
Okay, moving on when you're ready, sir. Ordinance 17 18, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 6117. An ordinance amending the estimated resources of the city of New Carlisle that will be available to appropriate <laughs> fiscal year beginning January 1, 2017. <coughs> ordinance 17 19, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 6117. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations in New Carlisle City Ordinance 17 11 E. Another business. Under other business, uh, Congressman Warren Davison will hold mobile office hours at our city, city building on the 14th of each month from 1 30 p.m. to 2 p.m. The community meeting on Bell Banner. That has been canceled, so I just want that to get out there in time so people hear that. The Memorial Day Walk 2017 will be Saturday, May 27th. The lineup begins at 11:30 at the IGA, and there will be a walk. The cemetery starts at noon, and there will be a ceremony at the cemetery once everybody gets here. Uh, movie night at Smith Park, uh, Friday, May 19th. Begins around 8.30 p.m. Come and watch Finding Dory. Anybody have to see that? I'm sure that's a good time for all the kids. Thank you, sir. And I have one more. Yes, okay. sir. <coughs> City offices will be closed on Memorial Day, May 29th. For the holiday. Thank you. Oh, okay. I had two things real quick before Mr. Reynolds. <laughs> two, Mr. Graham, if you wouldn't mind, would you give us just a little uh, spot on the farmer's market, if you wouldn't mind, please. Farmer's Sorry. market is set to begin June 24th. Um, vendors have not been registering in mass yet. Um, that will probably come the last few weeks before we expect quite a few vendors. Um, we have lined up uh, for the opening day, June 24th, uh, Andy Lawrence from one of the big radio stations, country stations, will be uh, doing live broadcast the first day, uh, looking at something special for the second day. For the third day, uh, the third uh, Wednesday, uh, Saturday, we have uh, a bluegrass band that's very popular in Miami County, Rum River Glen. They are excellent. They'll be the entertainment the third uh, Saturday, and we're still in the planning. We're expecting everyone to show up. We also do have room for more uh, businesses to sponsor the uh, the uh, farmers market. So, thank you, Mr. Graham. You told my wife you was going to send me an application for the sponsorship. I've never received it. That was my evil too. <laughs> How far is that question? Did you have something on this or another subject? No. Okay. Um, hold on. Also, I want to announce other events going on. Sorry, I have to look at my phone. Uh, the, the pool is not officially open on Friday, this coming Friday, but it does open for a public party that's being um, held as a fundraiser by the Tecumseh PTO. Uh, two Fridays, actually, in a, in a row. One's on May 19th, one's on May 26th, 6 to 8 p.m., uh, $4 admission, and it should be a really good time. The uh, city's done a real good job of getting the pool up and running for us. So, um, Mr. Reynolds. I'll let Mr. Luffy go first to Age Before Beauty. Wow. Oh. Oh. Remember, the beauty was a horse. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just want to say that uh, I had said once before that the, that the uh, what the cruise in that was at the Water Dog is now at the bank. It, uh, it started last Monday. It's going to be every Monday night, 5 to 8. Last Monday, we had over 30 cars there. Uh, tonight, both the back and the front parking lot were packed. Uh, so we're seeing, I'm going to guess, 50, 60 cars uh, on every Monday night. Please bring canned goods. The canned goods are being donated uh, to Bethel Church United, uh, to the food pantry. Uh, we're having 50-50 drawing. Every week, the 50-50 split goes to a different uh, uh, charity. Uh, we're having a different food vendor every Monday. Um, and a business is sponsoring the, the cost of 
uh, the DJ for the next eight weeks. So every every week, somebody different is sponsoring. So the community is really stepping up and doing some cool things. So bring your food, uh, your canned goods down, bring some change, buy some good food, listen to some music, and see some really cool cars. We've had a lot of cars there I've never seen before. So it's, been, it's a lot of fun. Thank you, sir. Mr. Reynolds. I just drove by that today on the way home, and it, both lots were packed. And I, I actually purposely turned left so I could see what else was there because I knew I'd come here. But uh, I had a quick question for Randy, uh, Mr. Bridge. Sorry. Um, do we know where we're at with the In God We Trust and our police cruisers yet? I don't know if we've yeah, got and anything I, with the sheriff yet. Totally thank you for bringing that up. I, I, I wanted to bring something up. Um, it's in our contract that all cars are going to be uniform, so they're just going to be on car. So it's going to be on the car. Good deal. All right. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Also, just want to touch also on that. I mean, with what Mr. Leffley said, what I announced, what Mr. Grimm just announced, our town, I think, is really awesome when it comes down to the groups that, that are in this city. You know, the city isn't perfect. No city is. But I also think that this town is unique when it has a lot of groups and organizations that put on a lot of good event shows, uh, car shows, uh, great businesses in town. Uh, so just, you know, thanks to everyone who's a part of all those types of businesses organizations, churches, you name it, and, and a lot of these people are volunteer who volunteer their time and hard work, so a big thank you to all of them. And Mr. Kitka. My apologies, it was on my report, I forgot. The flyers um, tonight, Saturday, June 10th, is the community cleanup. From 8 a.m. to noon at the old Westlake Elementary site. Well, we'll have dumpsters for everything, accepting right. tires for a cost. Um, I'll bring those flyers to council a little bit and be being put on our face. I just finished up the flyer, Facebook page, all that, and we'll get it passed out. Um, but tires, appliances will be accepted, basically. Paint. Uh, no paint that can be dried and thrown in your household trash. Um, mercury, if it's double bag. And yeah, anything else, mattresses, couches, all that stuff will be accepted. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kick. Here, council, any other questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. I'll move we adjourn. <laughs> That's my age for me to come, I got me. <laughs>